The recent inauguration of this five-star palace is one of the examples that some are betting on a brighter future for Gaza. A group of Palestinian investors spent more than 10 years and 50 million dollars building this hotel. Marble floors leading to a fine dining experience and a state-of-the-art gym are just some of the amenities on offer. Nothing is missing except for guests. There's just 10 of them today, foreigners and a few wealthy locals who don't want to be filmed. In Gaza, very few can afford a meal, let alone a room here. This suite goes for $240 a night. It boasts a view on the Mediterranean and on an al qassam Brigade's training ground next to a refugee camp. Further downtown, Mazaj, or Wim in Arabic, is another haven of comfort in the Palestinian enclave. The cuisine here is mostly Mediterranean, but it's not about luxury according to one of the restaurant's managers. Mazaj is not that expensive. You know, this is cost about 24 shekel. It's not too high. And in takeaway, it's cost about 20 shekel. It's not too high. That's about four euros. The owner says his staff struggles to keep quality high and prices low, despite the Israeli siege, which makes certain products difficult to come by. A situation which some of these customers say they're trying to forget about by coming here. It's nice for us to find somewhere when, where we can just, uh, uh, just to, to, to relieve and to, uh, to soothe ourselves from the, uh, the, the hard situation in Gaza. This Palestinian economist is very skeptical about the emergence of these upper class businesses. Omar Shaban says that this brand new shopping mall, for instance, does not reflect the reality of most Gazans. Life is good in Gaza for a few people, not for the majority of the Gazan. Uh, Gaza is inhabited by 1.6 million people. Two thirds of them are poor. The unemployment rate in Gaza reached beyond 70 percent. A ride through the nearby streets does tell a different story than the malls and the fancy venues. The economist we met with says that what Gaza is in fact witnessing is the disappearance of its middle class, while the gap between the predominantly poor and the wealthy few continues to grow.